Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty, who has given us the chance to be alive unto this very day. Dear beloved, God has given us the grace and the chance to be gathered here, to be in His presence, and I believe that it is not by accident that you are watching this video. The Spirit of the Lord just laid on my heart to share something with someone this very day. And I believe by the grace of God, you'll be blessed that you take time to listen. You see, the Christian's journey is a journey of faith. And the Bible makes us to understand that without faith, it is impossible to please God. The just shall live by faith. Romans chapter 14, 23 says that for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. If we want to please God in our walk, in our Christian movement, then we should come to the place of understanding what faith is and running with it. You see, when we talk about faith, we're simply talking about having a belief in what God has said. Not what any man has said, not what a doctor has said, not what a scientist has said, not what the expert has said, not what the professionals have said, not what those with experience have said, not what your pastor is saying, but what God is saying. So faith is simply taking God by his word. Can God do it? Can he honor his word? Can God fulfill his promises? And so I want to look at this thing called faith and how it works. This is an introduction to a few series that I'm, I hope to do by the grace of God. And then we hope that the Spirit of the Lord God will cause us to experience what His blessing is. Because listen, without faith, the Bible makes us to understand it is impossible to please God. And so we ought to come to the place wherein we will all be able to please God. If we desire to see the mighty hand of God, if we desire to see the power of God, then we ought to come to the place where the word of God will be made manifest and where we experience his power and love. To experience the power of the Most High God, it is of great importance that the believer begin to run with faith. Every second of our life, we must live it in faith and by faith. You, your tears, your sorrows, your sadness attack the heart of God. But your faith in God can move God to do greater things for you. Because the Bible said that all things are possible with him that believes. With God, all things are possible. And if you believe, if only you believe, you can also see the manifestation of things that might seem impossible. It takes faith to pre please God. But we have to grow in faith. We have to grow in faith. And to grow in faith, there are steps that will help us to grow in faith. But today, just this first day, my introduction is how faith works how faith works the faith works basically based on few things and that is what what i'm here to share with you that we will all understand how faith works faith works basically by your beliefs by your words by your action by few things that one ought to do because faith is a verb. It's not just a noun. You have to work it. What you believe will always motivate what you say. When your words are not in agreement with your heart's desires or decisions, then you have missed it in faith. So there are a few things I want to share with you as to how faith works. For Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 that for we walk by faith, not by sight. And you see, from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, he was talking about our earthly bodies and our glorious body that we shall receive when we are out of this earth. And in talking about our beliefs in the death and the resurrection and all there is, he put into bracket that we walk by faith, not by sight, which means he was talking about a general quotation that they believe us at the time. And it still works the same. Every Christian must endeavor to walk by faith and not by sight. What you feel, what you see, what you are experiencing, what you are hearing must not move you. Except it is based on the word of God. 
The Lord God Almighty is the ultimate power. Therefore, what he has not said, we must not believe it and run away in fear. The number one key thing that faith runs with is your beliefs. Our beliefs. Yes, our beliefs. What do you believe? Our belief is basically based on what we hear, what we see, or what we experience. What are you so much convicted about? If what we are hearing is not from God, why should you be afraid? God has the ultimate power and the ultimate word. You see, one of the sat uh, satanic strategies to destroy people and take them out of their faith is through words. And so the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so you ought to build your faith in God and come to terms with what you are hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you should strive to hear what God says, not what men say, not what professionals are saying, not what the experts are saying. Yes, they are good. But your final trust must be based on the word of God. What you are exposed to by way of seeing most time influences you also. So what are you seeing? We always look with the eyes, but we see with the mind. What are you seeing? If what you are seeing is contrary to what God has said, it doesn't make God a liar. It's just that you are seeing what is the reality, but there is something that goes beyond the scene. And this is where you must come to terms with. You have to move your imagination to see what God has said. Turn scriptures to pictures. Based on experiences of people, sometimes it becomes difficult for them to believe God. The Bible says something interesting. Let's read a scripture from the book of Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6. And the Bible makes us to understand that Moses had gone to the Jews in Egypt. And he had told them what the Lord God Almighty was about doing. But the people were more angry because when he came at first to give them the promises of God, their sufferings, their problems had been increased. And it says that, Exodus chapter 6, I read from the verse 6 through 9. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will read you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a, with a stretched out arm and with great judgment. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you God, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I'll bring you into the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I'll give it for, I'll give it you for an inheritance. I am the Lord. And Moses spake so unto the children of Israel. But they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. Now, God gave Moses a word to give to the Jews that he is about to deliver them. And the Bible said that when Moses went to the Israelites to tell them the promises of God, and they were excited at the first time they heard the word, but along the line, because God moves with time and they could not understand the timing of God, the Bible said that the Egyptians plundered them, caused them to suffer much pain. They handled them with cruelty. And the scripture says, when the Lord said to Moses again, go and tell them, I am the Lord God Almighty. I am that. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. They could not believe that. They were angry with Moses. Because the first time you came and you announced that, I am has sent me. We are excited and look, we are suffering more than it used to be. So they were not willing to hear. Sometimes, what we go through, what we see, what we are experiencing causes us not to believe the word of God. But faith works, number one, based on your beliefs or based on your convictions. You ought to convince yourself that God is faithful and God will never lie. So number one, your beliefs. Your beliefs are of great importance. Sometimes what many people work in is not that they believe God, but rather they work in mental ascent. In mental ascent, this is where people is to acknowledge something could be true and believe in your heart and not believe in your heart. 
Mental ascent is where many Christians have come to. They believe that, yes, God is real. They believe that God is powerful. They believe that God can do miracles. But they cannot believe that what God did in times past, he could do the same thing for them. I came to encourage you this very day that, yes, it is true. What God has said, he's more than able to bring it to pass. Don't let your experience or don't let what you are seeing or what you are going through, what you are hearing, deprive you of building your faith in God and experiencing the blessings of Yahweh. The number two thing as to how faith works is your confession. The words you speak, yes. Your belief will always influence your words. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 that with the heart we believe unto righteousness and with the mouth or with the lips or with the tongue we confess unto salvation. The words you speak, sometimes our heart and mind doubt the words we speak. So the voice of your heart must agree with the voice of your tongue. That means the words you speak within you must be in consonant with the words you speak out. But if what you are saying is different from what you believe, you are, you are not deceiving anybody but yourself. Because God weighs the heart. And Satan also considers the same. For God to work with you and for your faith to be more established, let the words of your heart be in agreement with the words of your tongue. When you decree, declare, say it openly, it agrees with the heart and the word of God. It is about God's word, not your word. The word you speak must be the word of God. So God had to come to our father Abraham and tell him to change his name to Abraham. That means Abraham must begin to call himself father of many nations. At first he was called Abraham, an exalted father. And God said, change it, change your confession and let people describe you as father of many nations. This was after 25 good years and he said to him, change the name of Sarai, Sarai also to Sarah, princess. The world is being controlled by words and blood. The words you believe and the words you speak determines what God can do for you and what Satan also can do against you. You should come to terms with a place wherein your words are sinking with the word of God. See, when you walk in faith, it is not about what you believe and what you say. It is about what God has said, what you believe in the, what God has said, and how you run with it. Okay, the last I'm going to share with us today has to do with our actions. Faith is not faith when you are acting different from what you claim to believe. And so your beliefs, your words, and your actions. The first three I will share with you today are these. If you claim you believe, then Apostle James is saying that, let us see what you claim to believe. Faith must always produce works. What you do is always motivated by your beliefs or what is going on in your heart. You see, we always confess what we believe. Your actions must be based on what God has said. That is what is called obedience. And so our father Abraham believed and started calling himself Abraham. You ought to believe and you ought to act. What God has said, you should not just say, I believe. But your belief must be considered in terms of what you say and what you do. Dearly beloved, I came to encourage someone this very day. We are in seasons and times where your faith is of great importance. If you want to see the hand of God move mightily in your life, then regenerate your thinking capabilities. Let your heart, let your mind, let your words be in alignment with what God has said. Do not live in fear. Faith works based on your beliefs. Work on your belief system. Work on your convictions. Work on your con confessions. Your profession must be in agreement with what God has said, not what anyone is saying. I bless God for your life and I hope you will open up and watch the subsequent ones. I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and then 
cause others to also come in because our God is real. With faith, we please God and see mighty things happen in our life. For God is faithful, His word is true, His word is sure. Faithful is He that has promised, and He will surely do it. Without faith, you can never please God. But with faith, all things are possible in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Almighty God continue to bless you and all. Stay blessed. See you another time. Bye.